So let's have a look first at what location-based management systems are. So LVMS stands for location-based management system. And it's a, it's a technical system. It's a system that we provide using a location breakdown structure on the left, meaning the physical locations in a building or on, on a project. And we're using the planned production in order to um, really itemize how we're going to complete the work in each location and using the production information along with the quantities and resources, we're able to have a more accurate duration calculation. Uh, so it's formula-based rather than assumption-based uh, at the calculation for duration. And we can drive the information from a, a BIM model or we can drive it without a BIM model. Uh, lots of people in the industry talking about 4D and um, that's essentially a component of VECO uh, to be able to provide location-based management using a 3D model and being able to have a byproduct of the 4D simulation at the end of it. We mentioned that uh, duration is based on calculation and therefore we're more accurate. We're actually um, explicitly saying when we're going to be working and we can remove the buffer from the duration of a task and put it at the end of a task or um, explicit buffers wherever we require them to essentially protect the flow, um, reduce the cascading delays between trades and in this lean um, theory able to optimize the, the, the flow of work and making sure that we are able to reduce the number of stops and starts between trades. So stops and starts causes lots of demobilization, remobilization costs and um, the technique uh, using location-based management and the flow line concept um, certainly uh, enable to, uh, enabling us to um, get a better starting point on the plan. Formula-driven forecasting, the point there to show it's not just about uh, moving end dates based on, again, another assumption. It's about using our data, our past performance to predict future uh, trends and then uh, the planning is supported by a very strict controlling mechanism uh, that allows you to see where you need to change things in the plan in order to meet the original target. So um, that's as a, a high level few bullet points to, to introduce. Let's look at what the system looks like in practice. Um, as I said, some of you might be new to this. Some of you um, might already um, be streets ahead of this, uh, this simple example, but uh, essentially the way that we look at flow line, the way that we look at location-based management is that we first of all have an extra dimension of location along, along the uh, left. The buildings here is one hierarchy and then floors in each building is a second hierarchy. We then have our calendar along the top. So we have time represented as we're used to on the x-axis and then instead of representing the tasks as activities strung along, uh, along a, a, a big list of, um, a, a, a broken out into locations and work breakdown and tasks um, and getting very complex logic between these, we're actually showing the flow of work, how we're picturing the flow of trades as a line flowing through the locations in the building in which they're going to work. So, you can see that the framing guy starts in the first floor and he flows through his locations, moves into the second building at the, um, the week beginning 8th of February. He flows through the second building and finishes at the end of the second week in March. Um, we can see that the tiling guy has stops and starts in his work and these stops and starts uh, causing us uh, additional costs, um, potentially going off site and not being able to return. Um, potentially just a reduction in productivity or um, the, the manpower disruption um, causes us problems on site. We also see instead of uh, just showing us where we're working with the line representing where we are in space, we also see this area of poorly utilized locations and essentially the waste we could be working through these areas. So a few things that we do. Um, we're looking to protect the workflow and, and have a planned continuous 
period for the tiling guy. So we're forcing a start date so that we are continuously working through this activity without any disruption. Um, and the difference in production here is now more apparent. Uh, the diverging and converging trades show us where we have waste in the process. And it shows us our realistic end date based on these resources currently. What we would like to do, however, is balance the resources so we optimize for the labor flow between those locations. We're um, creating this parade of trades and harmonizing the production between them and essentially being able to flow through locations and hand off when one location is finished for the next trade to start and have this harmonious flow. As we can see, um, it reduces the overall contract. So now this, as we mentioned before, this buffer period can be planned uh, and the, it, both the duration and the buffer can be explicit um, and the assumptions can be explicit um, to show us how we have arrived at this end point. That's the planning side of location-based management. Um, certainly at this point we, we could take this to the construction site and start to progress it. And the way that we would enter progress in a location-based management system is to, in the control chart that you can see on the screen now, start to tick to say when we started and when we finished each task in each location. And for the uh, drywalling, we can see that we're actually behind progress in the second floor, or it will be moving into the second floor and we will be behind. Um, essentially, really flagging the areas where we should concentrate our time. This control chart shows us with a stoplight system where we're behind and where we're late starting. And then we can use that information in a visual way represented in the flow line in the location-based management view. We're able to visualize what we have done in the past as a dotted line. And that is compared to our target, our solid line, and the dashed line is forecasting where we are likely to uh, keep going if we achieving if we do not change the plan. It's essentially, we are achieving the same outputs as we have been able to achieve so far, and it will then forecast our potential path, our potential conflicts, and the warnings here are shown as alarm dots, and these conflicts are showing where the trades forecast is going to clash with a planned start date and showing how that behind that progress where um, one trade is behind is going to cause some problems in the future and disruption to the continuous working pattern that we had planned. At the report date we're able to then see the delay, the overall delay to a project um, that we will experience if we don't do anything about it. And in this forecasting and controlling step, we would then look at the resources. We would change here the number of resources. We've changed from one to two. So we've got two crews flowing through the remaining duration um, and the remaining locations. Essentially what that does, it allows us to update the forecast and we can see how the forecast will look based on our new resource plan and hopefully we will achieve, um, we will mitigate the problems and we will end up in achieving the plan. So we're adjusting the schedule, we're making course corrections and the tool um, that the location-based management system is, it enables you to visualize production uh, in the planning steps, compare, compare that production and align it, remove the waste, um, track against production in the controlling stages and forecast using the calculation how our, um, our future performance might affect any of the planned trades and it allows us a tool to be able to um, change things should we wish to um, and should we need to in order to mitigate some of the problems. So let's look at, that was um, location-based management uh, and introduction. Let's look at last planner and uh, see what the last planner system, so LPS stands for last planner system, uh, see how that um, ties in or, or what the uh, collaboration on the process is and, uh, and see how that um, is put into practice on the construction site. So last planner, it's 
as I said, they're a more collaborative process. Um, it, it's the social uh, structure enabled to enabling us to put pull control into place. So instead of pushing our traditional thinking and um, our uh, dictatorship in start dates and, and durations into the field, what we're doing is we're asking for uh, commitments from the right people in, at the right time uh, with the right information and we're asking them to put their thoughts down and essentially be controlled by their own um, desires or their own abilities rather than uh, and it's still trying to meet an overall target um, but essentially uh, we're pulling the information rather than pushing the control and when we're putting things together when we're putting the uh, last planner target schedules together as far as the phase scheduling and um, how we would go about that social process. We, we start with some sticky note um, exercises and we start at the, at the end of the program and we start working backwards. Um, it's amazing how starting from the end and working backwards really does help us to ask more questions um, and it's all about releasing the work. Um, the process is all about trying to have more reliable promising mechanisms and essentially it targets the way of starting to um, refine people's um, the method in which they promise and making the, their promises more reliable means that the plan becomes more reliable. It's more likely that they're going to hit their end dates. The, um, the, the sessions that we hold, it's removing constraints in order to make the, the ready make the work ready so um, tasks made ready uh, TMR is a, um, uh, an, a, a uh, an acronym uh, that we use to describe a, um, a task that is now ready to start and there are no prerequisites uh, no constraints that haven't been removed um, essentially that is something we could start tomorrow uh, without any problem um, sometimes obviously we're not going to plan all of that work in the next uh, set of in, in the forecast or in, in the um, look ahead planning or the weekly work planning meetings and therefore we will have a list of workable backlogs so if we achieve or overachieve our, our plan then we will have workable backlog to be able to go back to the plan percent complete metric is a way of again helping to ensure that the uh, promising, the uh, commitments that are made are more reliable um, and continue to be made more reliable. Uh, plan percent complete is a very simple metric that allows us to say how many assignments did we have and how many in the previous week and how many did we actually complete as planned. It's a very powerful way of sharing a, a simple number per responsible person, per last planner, uh, to be able to then um, track their progress in the reliable promising. We aren't always going to complete things as planned. As we know, the uh, industry is a very dynamic one and there are changes, there are things that we, uh, um, unforeseen conditions and things that we do not expect all of the time. So when we have planned deviation, um, the plan percentage complete, uh, it is, is lower, obviously, something that wasn't completed as planned. That deviation, uh, the cause of deviation, then has to be analyzed. And the process of root cause analysis, so really asking those five whys, why did something go wrong? Um, why did that cause that to go wrong? What is the chain of um, reasons or the, um, the, the process that caused the deviation from what we had planned the previous week? Root cause analysis is a very structured way of, of getting to and nipping in, in the butt the um, real causes of the delay rather than just uh, managing those causes and um, uh, that's essentially a, a large part of why we end up firefighting on site is because we don't really get to the root cause and eliminate the root causes as soon as possible. <laughs>